Hello everyone, this is Jacob Ames, Applications Engineer with Hawkridge Systems, here today to discuss flexible subassemblies. Now, subassemblies in general are an excellent method for both organizing design assets and improving assembly performance in SolidWorks. And simply put, a subassembly is just one assembly inside of another. And they're used very regularly by design professionals, but what happens when motion is required in a subassembly? If you've ever worked with them before, you've probably noticed that by default, subassemblies don't allow for motion between their components. They can only move as a rigid group. Now fortunately this is fixed with just a couple clicks and we're going to demonstrate that here with this dump truck assembly that you see on the screen. This is a project that I've been working on for a little while and as it stands uh, the bed is actually free to articulate. Uh, now this is great but we don't actually have a mechanism to provide that motion so that's why I designed this hydraulic cylinder. It's a telescoping cylinder and if I go to the subassembly level and actually open it up you'll see that it's free to collapse and expand which is great but you'll also find that once we go back to the top level and actually insert this uh, that's not going to be the case because again it comes in as a rigid group. So here I've stored this as a configuration, it just automatically has inserted the cylinder and mated it up. And again, if I try to drag the bed, I'm out of luck because of that rigidity in the subassembly. So how do we take care of this? Well, fortunately, it's very simple. Simply right-click the subassembly that needs to be made flexible and choose this icon right here. That'll make your subassembly flexible in one click. Alternatively, you can always come over to Component Properties and under Solve As, choose Flexible Mode. Simply click OK, and once this has been complete, you're free to show any motion within your subassembly. Now you're probably noticing that things are a little bit choppy here, uh, and that is true, so user beware. It's important to understand that flexible subassemblies, especially if they have a lot of components with lots of motion, are going to tax your system, so they really should be used with discretion. However, they can be critical in order to get the perfect animation or motion study, for example, and it's important to understand when to use them. Same thing is true with my cab subassembly here. Right now, it's in its flexible state. That being said, I'm able to do things like open doors, open the hood, for example, and I wouldn't be able to do this if this subassembly was set to rigid. So that's really all there is to it. Pretty easy process. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, subscribe, or visit us at hawkridgesys.com. And if you're looking for more tips and tricks, make sure to check out some of our other videos. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.